Hey, Plant Pals, Mike the Kid of Gardener, and today's video is going to be for Meatless Monday. This is going to be a vegan squash soup. So I'm not going to use any meat products at all in this dish, which is <laughs> very unusual for me. I am a uh, carnivore. I like my meat. But for Meatless Monday, I typically, um, I will call it a vegetarian light <laughs> on Meatless Mondays because I sometimes do use uh, milk, you know, dairy, cheese, egg products. But uh, I'm trying to do better. I received a vegan cookbook as a prize in a live. And so I'm going to, for this Meatless Monday, I'm going to go vegan. So I have some vegan protein bra. I have some vegetarian soup that's just going to be the starters i'm going to read this make sure there's nothing in here no dairy or anything and if not if there is i'll get rid of it if not i'll use it um and i've got my garlic and also received as a <laughs> so this is going to be kind of a uh uh a look at some of the uh, prizes that i've won <laughs> and apparently there's a sign from the universe because i received this blessed uh seasoning uh, for my Renaissance grandma, so I'm going to be using that in there too. So I received uh, two vegan <laughs> prizes, so it's telling me that I need to do more for me this Monday. So I'm going to use this is a butter crunch squash, never had before. I'm going to cut that up and try it. I've had spaghetti squash before, used it. I've had butternut squash, um, usually in sweet things. I never really liked the uh, it's savory, but I'm going to try it. Maybe it'll be good in the soup. And I've got some turmeric, you know, so I've got all kinds of healthy spices in here to jazz it up. And I got some, you know, onion, some celery, and I had some leftover from uh, New Year's. I had some some uh, pork rinds and salsa as a treat. I didn't really care for this. They changed the formula of it, so it doesn't taste the same like it used to be. Salsa verde used to be really kind of fresh and good. It wasn't great, so I didn't eat much of it, as you can see. So, I'm going to use that in my, my stew. So, hopefully that'll be, you know, so it won't go to waste. And then, of course, I have my peppers. <laughs> These are peppers I grew. I'm always going to use peppers and pretty much everything I eat because that's what I enjoy. You don't have to. But I think it makes uh, life a little spicier and more enjoyable. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to chop up the squash and... Uh, and then, of course, this is coconut uh, milk. So, yeah, if everything goes right, I believe everything's completely vegan. So that's pretty cool. And then I'm going to put it in my pressure cooker and cook it. And then, meat this Monday, I'll eat it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get everything chopped, prepped up in the pressure cooker, and I will be back. <clears throat> Ooh, these are spicy. I don't know which one it is, but one of them is super spicy. <clears throat> That's the thing with hydroponic peppers. Sometimes you get one that comes out super spicy. Wow. <laughs> Whatever. I'm assuming because it's vegan, it's going to need that kick anyway, so... So I'm going to put that in the pressure cooker. I'm going to put some of the, uh, you should always put the wet ingredients on the bottom of the pressure cooker. Because that's what helps build up the steam and the pressure. So I'm going to put the jar of salsa. And I'm going to show in a later video that you can use this as a planter. It's perfect size. I'll show that later. We've got two cups ready for the squash seeds to save those. I'm going to put the vegan 
protein broth and put half in there. I like to put the other half on top. Not the greatest looking stuff, we'll see. <laughs> see how it tastes. Let me look through here, make sure there's no tomato paste, puree. Ouch. <laughs> this has pasta in it, which is vegan, but I'm doing a uh, low carb, so this is out. <laughs> I will replace it. Because I do want a thickener, I'm going to replace with some garbanzo beans. I'll add that towards the end. I'll add some of the coconut milk. Mm, smells good. And this will all get uh, this will all be blended later anyway so I don't have to be too fine with the chopping all right I got my lettuce see I always keep my keep your fingers like a claw and then you won't cut yourself You know, this is more of a do as I tell you, not as I do things. I don't often, I don't 100% do it, even though you're supposed to. So if you see me not doing the claw, <laughs> don't call me out on it. I know. <laughs> I'm not a professional chef. I am a home cook. All right. I'm gonna throw the garlic in there too on there. It's kind of this is a, like I said, it's all gonna be blended, so I can pretty much just throw everything in the pot, let it go, and then put it in the blender. Uh, let's see, I'll save the herbs for the top. Oh, we got my onion. I'll chop that up. See why I like to do my onions. I just cut this off. Cut that off so I have a flat surface. And if you're a gardener and you have an outside garden, you can supposedly throw these in the these tops in the garden and they might grow. I don't know. <laughs> I've never tried it. I've seen videos of people do it. I tried uh, some things similar to that hydroponically and then cocoa core inside and it failed miserably. Just stunk the house up with rotted vegetables. And when I had the fungus gnats, they loved it. So that was one. Thing I gave up on but outside go for it inside go for it too if you feel like you know, it's your house <laughs> all right again this can be just rough chopped All going into the blender afterwards. Well, it depends on the texture. I might throw part in the blender afterwards. We'll see. All right, get my seasoning. Huh. I'm gonna put some of the uh, turmeric in there now, so I don't forget it. Didn't have any fresh, so powder it'll be. All right. Okay, save those. All right. Now to the job of cutting <laughs> the big boys. That's gonna be a pain. Yeah, okay, they're not bad. So, I'm gonna get a cup. So, this will be the butternut. Okay, handy dandy 
things. Ooh. What I do is I just scrape the seeds in the gunk right into the the cup. <coughs> Still getting the spice from those uh, peppers. Whoa. Stop trying to escape me. You will be seeds. I will grow you. You may live again. All right. Put that there. Again, this is slippery. <laughs> be careful. I'm going to wash my hands and dry them after I do this so that I can go back to cutting. It's hard to do on, on the, uh, it's hard to do on camera because I'm looking through the camera while doing it. Save as many of these seeds as I can because you don't know the viabilities. You know, it's been it's an older it's been here. I've had this squash in the house since uh, Christmas. It's now. November, I mean, uh, January, <laughs> November, it's January, so you would think they would actually be better, more viable as they age, but we'll see, I don't know, I've never grown these before, so I couldn't tell you. Well scraped out, I'm going to scrape this one out better. Again, it really doesn't matter. I mean, the seeds are edible, so I could probably blend them, just blended them right into the stew and made it thicker, but I don't know. I don't know if you need to roast them first or what, but yeah. All right. Excuse the <laughs> heavy breathing because I, for the last three to four days, I've been shoveling every day for hours a day. And I'll put a, a video of where the city plow comes and buries me with like five feet of snow because I live at the end of the block. And so all the snow from the street gets pushed all the way to my driveway and sidewalk and I'm responsible for clearing it. The city doesn't do that. So let's cut this for my, put a cup there for my other seeds. <laughs> Then all you do is you get a big cup, fill it full of water, and you get the seeds like that. And what will happen is, in a few days, when they're ready, the non-viable seeds will float, and the viable seeds will sink. And the, whatever gel stuff is stuck to it will be removed, and you just rinse them off, dry them off, and you have your seeds. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to get some foil and some paper so I can write label what the, what it is. This is a butter. Oh, this is a butternut. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Be right back. All right. I have uh, the label here. Butter nut squash. And I denote that it's from the store so that I will remember in case like it's not good or not viable that I didn't purchase them from any company. I just got them from the store. So I'll remember that. All right. Be right back. I'm going to put this on my... Uh, Experimental show.
crack this open because I don't want to cut through the seeds too much. So I want to save them. I've got my cup right here. Got my handy dandy spoon. And again, I'm gonna do this off camera so it's less uh, <laughs> work for me to try to do over the top of the uh, tripod here. All right, I'll be back. All right, we have the seed saved. Get them started in the process of breaking away from their membrane thingies. And again, the viable seeds will sink to the bottom, bad ones will float, and the goop will stay on top. And I'll get throw that away and save the seeds. Dry them out for three days, bag them up, be good to go. All right. Buttercup squash from the store, experimental shell, good to go. Quickly chop up the rest of this. Die. <laughs> I can take out my uh, back pain aggressions on the squash. Oh, I forgot some of the, some of the skin there. Get off. All right. And you go away. All right. I'm nearly done. <laughs> of course, I don't know how long I'm going to let this video be, but I do need watch hours, so maybe I'll. <laughs> and people will just fast forward through anyway. Um, we'll see. I know some people love the, uh, the sound of chopping and Love watching that whole prepping process and all that stuff, so might just let it go. And who knows, this, this soup might be horrible. <laughs> I don't know. But, gotta try. That's the fun part of these things. All right, got my can opener, my garbanzo beans. Like I said, I'm not gonna save the liquid, I'm gonna do it over the sink. The liquid probably would be a good thickener, so I'm gonna save part of this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save about half the uh, bean, the, the bean, the bean juice. Hi, bean juice. Hey, buddy. Love that guy. Bean juice. Follow bean juice on YouTube. The cutest kid ever. All right, I'm gonna put my pepper, lots of pepper. I'm a pepperaholic, as you can tell from the hot peppers and the pepper. So I got my pepper. I'm gonna add some salt. I'm going to add the blessed seasonings. Bunch of that. Which is uh, my Renaissance grandma, Lady Bee Collections. Follow her too. All right, got my pressure lid. Satisfying sound. All right, now you get to hear the satisfying sound of the pressure cooker being turned. Do -do -do -do. Know that. Okay, the pressure. Thingies to is that open or closed? You see, it tells you shows you how tired I am. Ugh, I can't even remember. Anyway, <laughs> pretty sure that's closed. Or is it? Is that open? Yeah, that's open. That's closed. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to set it for stew. So I'm gonna hit the. Soup and stew button, 35 minutes. Yeah, I'll just trust the process. Oops, did not want to do that. Stop it. Okay. Soup and stew. 
get to getting. All right. And once it comes up to pressure, and I'll be able to tell if, this, if it's properly uh, closed or not because it'll just start hissing and I'll just close it and then the little delay will pop up and it'll cook for under pressure for 35 minutes. That's how a pressure cooker works. So I decided to know that. I was like, oh, I can have food in 35 minutes. No, it's more like an hour because it has to come up to pressure and then it cooks for 35 minutes. Under That's why you don't see any time here. This will spin until it achieves pressure and then it'll start counting down. So that's one of the things you have to keep in mind. So if it says, you know, pressure cook for five minutes, and you're like, oh, yeah, a five minute meal. Yeah, it could take 20 minutes for it to get up to pressure. So it's a 25 minute meal. And then plus two, some things require you to do what's called a natural release, which is you let it sit until the thing drops and you can open the lid again. Or some things allow you to turn the knob, you know, to let, release the steam manually and then you can open the lid. All right, I will be back in probably an hour. I'll be back. All right, it's been an hour. It has almost released, so I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah. <laughs> See, it's still got that pressure. Gonna, not much though. Just gonna... All right. See, there's still a little bit of stuff going on, but the release latch is good to go. And there's my stew. Oops, steaming up the thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into the blender. I'm going to be very careful because it's going to be hot. So I'm not going to put the lid sealed. I'm going to leave it vented so that it doesn't build up steam and then blow all over the place. So I'm going to be very careful. I'm just going to put small batches at a time. And then I will be done. Be right back. All right. I put a small batch into the blender. You can see it's, the steam's coming out of it. What I'll do is I'll take a paper towel and just put it like this. I won't put this down because it'll pop off and shoot everywhere. So I want the heat to release. So I'm going to put that there. Can't do it with the, <laughs> holding the camera. So I'm going to put the camera down. And I'm going to blend this up. I'll be back. done that's the finished soup so I'm going to dish myself up a bowl I will be right back all right and serve myself up a bowl small bowl <laughs> it's vegan I haven't tried it before hopefully it's good might need salt might need pepper we'll see and plus I have my uh, pepper sauce but you can see it's got a nice consistency and I think it'll taste good so Give my thumbs up. All right. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have an awesome day.